Good morning. Oh, what a beautiful morning it is, too. Welcome. Welcome to the Adam's Gate, the day four of our study of Matthew. If you haven't joined me before, please go back and look at day one, then you'll understand a little bit more of what I do here. Uh, I'm so grateful, though, that you have decided, and I hope you've noticed the sprucing up of the Adam's Gate stain, the paint. You've noticed the doors that have a little bit of, of some rot in it. Please understand that the, that was just discovered this summer. The doors are going to be taken care of in the off season, and we're going to see even more improvements to the Adam's Gate. In fact, when you come back, and I'm saying this in faith, when you come back next summer, we can all be here, you are going to see some amazing changes. And if you've not ever been here before, I have the feeling some people might be might be pointing them out to you, sprucing up, making things look just that much better because we want to keep the Yagu Scout Reservation as the premier scout reservation in the Northeast, right? It's an amazing place and we want people to continue to be able to come here year after year. But we need to get into day four. Yesterday, remember, we talked about Holy Week with Matthew. They were heading off to uh, Bethany for the night. Throughout the week, as that week goes on, Jesus, Matthew, and the rest of the disciples, they keep making the trek back and forth between Jerusalem and Bethany. Jesus has been coming and teaching in the temple courts every day and on the streets. Now, towards the end of the week, Matthew lets us know what happens in Matthew 26. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. Passover. You know what that's all about? The Passover? Passover is the major Jewish spring festival which commemorates the liberation of the Israelites from Egyptian slavery. It lasts seven or eight days. This holiday is incredibly important, and Jesus wants to spend it with his disciples. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely! You don't need me, Lord. Picture Matthew, please. He hears Jesus say, One of you will betray me. How do you think he's feeling? I mean, Matthew knows who he's been. Yes, he's lived a different life the last three years, but he knows who he's been. As a tax collector, he would have cheated his friends. He lived a life of greed and crime and corruption. I am certain he does not want to betray Jesus, but like the others, he asks, Surely, you don't mean me, Lord. He doesn't want to. But I believe he's afraid. He's afraid of what he's capable of. See, we all have power. We have power to heal and power to harm. Matthew in the past has used his power to harm. He is trying now to use his power to help but I expect he's afraid of how easy it would be to slip up. And then Jesus does this. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn. They went out to the Mount of Olives. If you've ever participated in communion, the Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, those words are very familiar to you. But again, Matthew is hearing those words for the first time. Do you think he understood what Jesus really meant? I believe Matthew and the others were trying to work it out. But Jesus doesn't say, oh, you don't understand, so I can't do this with you. He has communion with them. And he, and he does the same for us. He doesn't wait until we have it all worked out. He comes in and has communion with us, even if we don't understand everything. I know I don't understand everything. But 
I want communion with Jesus. So there's Matthew doing what Jesus says. Not knowing what it all means, but trusting that Jesus knows what he's doing. Scripture goes on, Then Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, This very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Now when I read that above passage, sometimes I only focus on Peter because he's the one talking, but please remember Jesus is talking to all the disciples. Peter speaks up, but all the other disciples agree. Verse 30, 35 says, And all the other disciples said the same. Matthew is declaring that he is not going to disown Jesus, not going to betray Jesus, not going to disown Jesus. Next, Jesus takes all the disciples, except Judas, who has left, and uh, if you were here earlier, you would have seen Judas, just so you know, like earlier this summer. Next, Jesus takes all the disciples except Judas to the Garden of Gethsemane. He leaves some of the disciples in one spot. Those disciples would have included Matthew, and he goes in further, taking James and Peter and John in further with him. But his instructions to all of them are the same. Stay awake and pray with me. None of them stay awake, which includes Matthew. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd, armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen this way? In that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. For this has all taken place, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. And I think Matthew's feeling right now. Maybe he's upset that he fell asleep. Maybe he's upset that he didn't attack too. By the way, we do know from another version of Scripture that it's Peter who cuts off the guy's ear. So maybe he's upset that he doesn't grab a sword. Maybe he's wondering what the heck happened is happening and why Judas is leading people to arrest Jesus. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. All the disciples. Matthew, just mere minutes before, had said he wouldn't disown Jesus. He wouldn't betray Jesus. And here he is running away. that as he went as he thought about it he probably realizes that he is doing both he is betraying and disowning Jesus I'm sure in that moment he wasn't sure what to do but he makes a choice and his choice is to run we said earlier I said Matthew is a meticulous record keeper. he gives a very detailed account of the next days of Jesus' existence his trial, crucifixion, and his death. That can be found in Matthew 26 and 27, but he wasn't there. How do you think he was able to give such a detailed account? Well, I think he did start watching from a distance. Far away, but he was watching. And I'm sure that later he went in and asked people to fill in some of the gaps. But I believe he actually saw much of what happens in Matthew 26 and 27 that he saw. But how do you think he'd be feeling then? watching his friend, his teacher, the one he believes to be the Messiah, and the one who helped him change his life, watching that person be crucified. 
unjust. So we leave Matthew today, having watched Jesus be arrested, put on trial, be crucified, died, and get buried. There's going to be a lot of emotion tied up on all of this sorrow, anger, grief, pain, confusion, heartache, and so much more. But with that, how do you think Matthew is doing today fulfilling the skeleton? Please make sure you put your answers in the box for me so that I know that you've been here and been participating. I am very grateful for the Yahoo Network and being able to do this. But one more day of Matthew here at the Adams Gate, and then of course I'll see you Sunday down at the cathedral for our service about Matthew. But I'm going to pray right now, and then I'll sign off, and I'll see you tomorrow for day five of Matthew. Oh, before I do, almost forgotten to mention this, tomorrow my sister is getting married, which is pretty exciting. So, I have the opportunity to attend a wedding this summer, which I am very excited about. Her name is Pam. Please pray for her and Dave. They are a wonderful match. They really are. So, uh, keep that in your prayer. We'll be praying for them today and tomorrow. So join me in prayer. Lord, how grateful we are. I'm grateful for a wedding. I'm grateful for my sister Pam and for Dave and for them becoming truly one in you. And I, I'm I ask that you would bless that union. I'm so grateful that you have brought them together. Lord, I ask that you that you be with each of us. Lord, there's so much going on in this world that we don't understand. So I ask that you would help us to focus, to be able to concentrate on you, to be able to hear the things of you, to make a difference in our world. Lord, I ask that you would guide and protect each one of us. Father, for those who are battling COVID, that you bless and protect, that you eradicate COVID and bring us all back together again, Lord, that we can truly be here at Yagu together. Lord, for those who work in the hospitals, that you protect them and help their families to understand the extra precautions that they need to take. Lord, for those who work on the in essential services, be they nursing and retirement homes, or be they in prisons, be they at grocery stores, that you bless and protect. And Father, for those trying to reopen businesses, that you help them. Father, for the plans that are coming up to try to reopen schools around the country, again, that you give wisdom. Father, as we go out in public, that you would help us to mask, to be able to protect others and to protect ourselves. Lord, I, I pray for those who are first responders, that you bless and protect them. Help them to say a word of prayer before they step into any situation. Lord, I ask that you, that you be with our politicians, again, praying for unity. Unity in you that can only come from you as they all focus and concentrate together. The compromise is needed, Lord, that we, but that we can truly see people working together and help us to do the, be the example in our daily lives. Now, Lord, I ask that you be with our military, especially with Adam and Jesse, that you bless their new life. Protect Adam. Thank you for his service and all those others who serve. And, Father, for those who have served, that you bless them as well. And bless each of us, Lord. Help us to have the focus, the concentration to make a difference in this world. One person at a time, one act, one moment at a time. And I pray for the Yago Network and the Rangers and all the work that's being done and ask that for your continued blessing on them. In Jesus' name, amen. So, thank you so much for joining me here. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for Day 5 of Matt. Bye-bye.